Well, as it turned out, knowing the winner actually didn't make the season that bad to watch, honestly. I still got really, uh, nervous about a couple of situations. I felt bitter towards some contestants, liked other contestants, and stuff like that. Because I knew the winner, I did, uh, figure out the results for quite a few evictions beforehand. Kristen, Reagan, Brittany, and that kind of thing. But the final free one did surprise me, more on all that stuff later, I hope. So, um, I feel like I kind of have to touch upon the fact that a lot of the uh, girls kept getting booted in this season because when the season started off, there were six girls, seven guys. There actually was originally supposed to be another girl, but for some reason she dropped out, whatever, so... And then out of the first six evicted, five of them were women, except, uh, Matt used a diamond to power a veto, which got Kathy out. Now, um, personally, I'm not somebody who really claims that any, uh, reality show boobians are sexist or racist. It's just what happens on the show, okay? I mean, like, I seriously doubt that anybody on these reality shows has ever voted for somebody to go because... They are uh, a specific race or a specific gender. Now, people do drop in comments like that every once in a while because Roger and Survivor Amazon, he dropped sexist comments. Chris dropped a couple of sexist comments in Van Watt too, although it was a little bit different for him because he was actually in a couple of women's good favor and he became really important when he made those comments, although he only did it to the camera. Then there was Colton doing the kind of racist comments to Bill. I'll let you form your own opinion on that, okay? But, no, I don't really think a, uh, people on these shows are just like that. And then if to the people who are definitely going to be complaining about only casting a certain amount of African Americans, again, that's just what happens on these shows, okay? Come on. Now. Now that that's out of the way, uh, the pre-jury people, well, all of them were getting the kind of added that I could pick up on that they weren't going to matter that much, and with Big Brother, it's really hard to do, because you gotta remember, the show is going on as they're piecing it together, not like Survivor or The Amazing Race, where they shoot everything, and then edit in an appropriate fashion. To them, of course. I mean, like, they were interesting, because that was something that I was really impressed by. Every person managed to make an impact on the dynamics and development of the house, and I was also pretty impressed at how many, uh, unanimous votes there were. I mean, like, there was only, uh, two evictions that weren't unanimous, and the only people to get, uh... Repeated votes was actually Matt, and then Hayden got one vote that he honestly should not have gotten. So, yeah, it's amazing how seasons like this turn out. I always kind of like that, you know? So I touched upon the pre-jury people, not much to discuss, except I was bummed that Annie, as the saboteur, got booted so fast because I was like, that's the main twist for the season, and then you just eliminate it, just... Dread. But I was glad that they brought the Saboteur Twist back later on in the season, so that I c that takes the place of bringing somebody previously evicted from the house back into the house as they were doing like every third season. So for anyone complaining that that twist was missing this season, the Saboteur is the uh, bringing back thing, okay? <laughs> I've got the window open if you're hearing noise from outside. So, uh... Thoughts on the development of the house once we had hit the jury, well, the Brigade Alliance, I really like this alliance, because it was an alliance that stayed, uh, kind of secret, was all members of one gender, and yet they managed to sail through the game pretty well, because of how tight the social interaction was with the house, everybody pretty much had to form a relationship with everybody, even people who hated Brendan and Rachel, they actually still mattered in the evictions of many people, and I find it hilarious that half of the game was just a switch between Brendan and Rachel and the Brigade getting in control, then it was briefly interrupted when, like, Brittany was in power, but then the Brigade just owned it after that. Interesting. So, uh... Now, how do I feel about Brendan and Rachel? I gotta admit, I honestly didn't really like them. It's more Rachel's fault than Brendan's fault, because, um... 
Well, she was just obnoxious in that kind of thing. I know she drops uh, hints in a couple of other things that she didn't like in interviews and such, that she isn't completely such a bad person, and that the house guests were really treating her badly. Well, yeah, I'm sure that there was definite fault on both sides of this equation, but... Man, you could have done way better than you did. You were just obnoxious and going, No one gets in the way between me and my man. Oh, yeah, way to distance yourself from the rest of the house, guess. And then I comment you left on Reagan? Just... Oh, I am so impressed that... Nothing really happened, that there was no actual fighting going on in that ha house. Because that's something that's... Interesting. I can't really, uh... Think of a situation where an actual fight has broken out in the uh, Big Brother house, and it's pretty amazing that that's happened, because, you know, all the arguments that happened at the beginning of Season 4, then, uh, the house being perfectly split in Season 6, Evil Dick's comments, you know? That's kind of surprising that it hasn't happened yet. Uh... Oh yeah, then touch upon Brendan real fast. Uh, he did have some fault, but not as much as Rachel, to be honest. Although I do kind of hate the fact that, you know, they were both in a relationship before the house, and then basically once they find each other, they're just like, yeah, pff, screw you without even an apology to the prior uh, partner, you know? <laughs> so when they left, I was just like, yeah. Although I, did, although I was a little bit sorry to see Brendan go, because, you know, he fought to get to where he was. Although he was helped, so, yeah. And that's basically how I feel about uh, Reagan and Brittany also, because they went through quite a lot to get to where they were in the game, and they had good relations with most people, but they were just a threat to uh, stop the uh, members of the brigade from winning, so... Yeah, they did kind of have to go, and Matt, he was pretty good in a strategic mind, but unfortunately he distanced himself because the social relationships he had just ended up outplaying his usefulness in the game. And it was a bummer to see him go early, because I would have loved to have seen what would have happened had that kind of drifting not happened, or at least the brigade decides not to focus on him and follow the original plan. That would have been real interesting. So, I think that covers up, uh, pretty much everybody. Oh yeah, Reagan has the second saboteur. Well, since it ended... Given how they made it seem like Annie, uh, came up with most of the ideas for sabotage either on her own or through production, it didn't feel like as great, but I love the fact that nobody thought it was him. <laughs> Seriously, no one did, so... <laughs> good job, Reagan, yeah. Then the fuss on the final three, well, obviously, since I knew Hayden uh, won, that's where the season stopped uh, really being interesting. But I was really surprised when uh, Hayden won head of household and evicted Enzo, although I'd be willing to bet actually that um, had I not known that Hayden won this season, I bet I actually would have been rooting for Enzo, honestly, because even though he did way bad in the competitions, even worse than Cowboy, because you gotta remember, Cowboy won one power of veto and round two of the final HOH competition. Enzo, he won one veto. He didn't even win a single round of any HOH, so just... Whoo! <laughs> Congratulations, Cowboy, your record has, uh... Improved! <laughs> Anyways. Uh... But yeah, Enzo was actually a pretty interesting player, even though he wasn't on the block that many times, but every time he was, people were serious and considering getting rid of him because they didn't think he was trustworthy. He ended up making great relations with everyone in the house, and he did play the best strategic game of his season, yeah. Best strategic game in the entire history of Big Brother. My behind, dude. That honor is going to go to either Will, Dan, or Danielle, okay? And I'm actually tempted to give it to Dan by default because I only really put Will up there after I saw his performance in Su and Survivor All-Stars. Big Brother All-Stars! Anyway... But yeah, it was disappointing to see him go, although I love the fact that he ended up actually being the tiebreaker and giving it to Hayden, but 
Yeah, I bet I would have voted for Hayden because Lane ended up being the brigade member I got the least amount of uh, personality with. I don't hate the guy at all, but people just never really considered him that much. He was just always a member of the brigade that people liked and just they kept him in the house. The only time it seemed like he was in danger of going ever was the final free, and that was it. Even though he would have betrayed the brigade, to be honest. Yeah. So that's really all I can say about this season. I really liked it, and I'm amazed that knowing the winner actually didn't uh, really affect my opinion about it at all. Although, had the season gotten in a more negative tone, I bet I wouldn't have liked it. But, yeah, I guess I just got real lucky. Let's hope I don't learn the winner for any other future reality show competitions and all that. So I started watching season 13, kind of mixed on my thoughts about it. But we'll see what happens with that season. I've heard that this one's kind of...